Shabbat Shalom. Today is a wonderful day. It's a Shabbat. And uh, this is the day that the Lord has given us that we can rest from our labor, from our work, and um, that we can have rest in Him. So, in as much as we have dig deeper into a lot of things, good teachings, and uh, many good topics. It is always important to go back to the basic. And sometimes um, we kind of neglect or kind of put some important things as if they are not important because we are way too familiar with them already. So right now in the Shabbat, we're going to discuss about things like the word sin, repentance, confession, mercy, and grace. So this is the first part of the important words in the Bible. But before we continue, let us pray. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father and our King. Lord, we praise you, we honor you, we magnify your name. Because you are the Lord of the Shabbat. And you have given us this day that we can have rest from our work and that we can have and find rest in you. Lord, as we learn about your word, may you teach us, Lord. May your spirit be upon us so that we will be able to learn the things that your spirit will teach us. Let your words be spoken and let your servants listen to you. We praise you, we honor you, we magnify your name. This we pray in the most precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord, our Savior, our Master. Amen. Amen. There are many important words in the Bible that we often assume what it means and never bother to question them. And we immediately jump into more important things. However, most likely than not, we build wrong theologies or develop wrong belief system that is completely unbiblical. Proper understanding of the scriptures involves correct understanding of the terminologies used. And we have to remember that our Bible has been translated from Hebrew and Greek into English. Now, if it has been translated are we just going to assume that everything has been done properly? So, in the previous centuries, it may be difficult, but as it has been prophesied in the Bible that knowledge and wisdom will increase on the last days, now we have the ability to check, counter-check, and research the things that are very important, the things that matters pertaining to the Word of God, especially to what, be, what we believe about Him. We now have the resources and the tools that we need to do these things. So why don't we use them instead? Because having faith does not mean that you're going to be a blind follower, are we? We are not going to be a blind follower. We have to check. If it is good, we follow. If it is not, we reject. We have to make sure that we understand the real meaning of the message and not the way that translators want us to understand the Word of God. There are some translators who gave their lives because they did not approve to the misrepresentation of words. At the very least, we have to honor these people by doing the same things that they did. We should not give up to what is already there. Tyndale lost his life because he refused to translate the word ecclesia into church. He, he translated it in, in, in the English translation of the Bible 
in of, of his version the ecclesia was translated into congregation so but because of that and other four minor things he got five words only that caused him to die but primarily because he refused to change the ecclesia into church but rather he used ecclesia into a congregation therefore because of that word he was killed and was declared heretic so now we have the ability to check these words whether the words that we see are the real words in Hebrew and in Greek and what do they mean now let us first consider sin this is the most common word most common word and in Old English the spelling is S-Y-N-N. It's sin. Singian. Or in Latin, sons or sont, meaning guilty. And then, this was developed and later on became the English S-I-N or sin. That's the word. That's how the etymology of the word. We're talking about sin. Transgression is a different word. Sin is the primary word that is in the Bible pertaining to something that is against God. Easy. <laughs> We're talking about sin, okay? So sin is there. It's everywhere in the Bible. Sin, you sin, you sin, you sin, you sin, you sin. So other things, yes, there's a, a transgressions, iniquities, other, other words. But we're talking about sin right now. Old English is sin. It's a noun or singian verb and, and related to sons, which means guilty. Now, it was mentioned 448 times in 389 verses in the Bible. It's compared to other words that is related to it like transgressions or iniquities. Sin is the most mentioned. Remember, sin is an English word. Do not think it is a Hebrew word or a Greek word. It is not. So, but why did the translators use that word? That's where we're going to investigate. All right? We often hear that sin means to miss the mark. Have you heard about this? Oh, yes. You miss the mark. You're almost there, but you just miss it. Therefore, you sin. That's, that's, that's what we were taught. Is it the real meaning? Is it the only meaning? We will know in a bit. All right? Now, the definition of sin in the Bible is in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. That's the clearest definition of sin. You cannot get away with it. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Straightforward. Now, it may sometimes when we approach a verse, we, we, because of the nature of our brain, we kind of look only towards the last portion of it, this definition. And we kind of forget this part. Sin transgresseth also the law. What does it mean? Transgression against the law. Right? So, for sin, it transgresses the law. So, meaning, if you do something that is against the law, you have sinned. But whose law? That's the question. If the law of God has been done away with, then whose law are we transgressing at? Big question. So you may wonder why people have been pushing so hard that the law has been done away with so that there is no more sin. You know, in, in the court of law, in the court, when you battle in the court, right? In order for your client, the, the lawyers, in order for a client to, to, um, to get away with, with the, the violation of the law, 
one strategy is to hit the law itself. The law is unfair. It has to be scrapped. So if the law is scrapped, then he did not commit any more sin. That's why they don't want the law. Because if they can attack the law, it's gone, no more sin. Then therefore, no more case, right? So meaning, you can do it again without actually sinning. Because the law has been done away with. Remember? You can do it, keep on doing it, and keep on doing it. And you cannot be punished anymore because there is no law to violate that. The law has been done away with. But the question is, was it really done away with? If it was done away with, then there's no more sin. What are we talking about here? So if I can do something to you, I am not sinning because there is no more law to violate, right? Isaiah 53. It's, it's um, again, we are just in the introduction. We can study verse by verse or ch chapter by chapter, but this is one basis of using it. Identifying the terminologies. Why did they use it? Sometimes they would use different words as, as, a, uh, as a way to... Because you cannot keep on repeating certain words and it's boring. In a sentence, you have to change it a little bit, but it has meanings too. Right? You cannot say, uh, say for example, you can use the sin, a transgression, iniquities, all in one sentence. But you may be referring to certain things or you may be referring to different things. So that's why, why we have to examine the Bible. So what I'm pointing here is sin, is the transgression of the law. I'm pointing it out, the reason why I'm pointing this verse, because people want to eliminate the law, eliminate the, the commandments, they are done away with, no more sin. Right? If there is no more sin, including those who did not receive Jesus Christ, has no sin too, because there is no law. Right? Everybody are free. They can do whatever they want. What's the point? There's no need for conversion. No, no, nothing. Because the law has been done away with 2,000 years ago. There's nothing to violate that. Is that the case? Big problem. Remember, the enemy accuses the brethren. So he's kind of an advocate. He's kind of a lawyer. Not an advocate. A lawyer. Like a litigating lawyer. So he would attack evidences he would attack the law to make things happen right now let us examine the first instance of the word sin in the bible now i'm using um, the the midrastic way you remember the pardes pardes the peshat the plain and simple the remes which is um uh symbolism right uh like metaphor midrash or the resh midrastic midrashic Meaning the first instance of it, or when did it appear, how did it appear, what does it mean over there? And the sod is mis mystical, like what has been revealed, right? Now, let us examine the word sin in the Bible. It was first mentioned in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. Why not in Genesis chapter 3, when sin actually happened? It says here, this is the case when... when uh, Abel and Cain made a sacrifice, and then eventually the sacrifice of Abel was taken, and uh, Cain's were, were rejected, and now he is his man. And then the Lord talked to Cain and said, If thou do doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now, for proper, just, just to give you the taste of it, let's, let's examine this. The Hebrew used for sin here is chata. It means an offense. And usually, it is habitual. Alright? It is an offense. Now, what is very interesting is the Seth, um, oh no, no, this is not the one, okay. Now we are number two. So it's, it's habitual offense, meaning 
you 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 had a crime against you you did something really offensive you did not just miss the mark you did something really not good that offended a person or in this case the lord now the word well in hebrew is yatab which means to do what is right what is right and proper so the offering of one is the the best uh, animal or, or lamb in his in his uh, flock while cain offered the the fruits of, of of the ground but he is a farmer so why did he, why was his offering rejected and the other one accepted Because, because obviously he did not do what is right. They will, they will say like this. Oh, because his heart is not right. Obviously. But what if he put also um, an animal and he still his heart is not right? Exactly the same as Cain, uh, as Abel, but his heart is not right. We can both give $100. One is cheerful and the other one is not. So, but his was not accepted. Obviously, the heart is not right. But what is here is he is not doing what is right. First of all, why did they have to do a sacrifice? Meaning there is a certain instruction. It was not just out of the blue and out of like, you know, Cain's, yeah, Abel said, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'm bored right now. I'll do a sacrifice to God. It has nothing to do with it. It is at appointed time. And for every appointed time, there is also appropriate offering. There is an offering for the first fruit of the, of the, of the uh, produce of the land. There is an offering for burnt offering. There, there, there is a time for everything. In this case, the yatab, meaning you did not do what is right or proper. Meaning he's, he did not do what is right on the proper time. Probably he sacrificed, he offered... The, uh, the fruit of the land or the produce of the land when it is time to produce or to offer a burnt offering. He did not do what is proper, but he gave anyways. <clears throat> this, is, this is what I'm saying to people. Offering has nothing to do with just giving. When you give and you get a different intention just for the sake of giving, it's better for you to keep it. At least you did not lose something. Just keep it to yourself, right? At least you have some money because it will not be accepted anyways. People want to give because they want to be blessed. You have to give because you love the Lord. It's similar to, remember the, um, what is that uh, word, Brother Jonah? The uh, korban. You, you help your parents and you say, whatever help I give you, that's my offering to the Lord. Well, for him it doesn't matter because I get help anyways. And you're doing it for the Lord. But the Lord said it is not right. You have to give to your parents because you love them. You, because you honor them. Then you give to the Lord what belongs to the Lord. So you're giving the wrong. That is improper. That is an offense. So it's better for you to keep, to keep that. Right? <clears throat> So, we're getting there? All right. <clears throat> so, Seth is the word, Hebrew word, uh, and it does not only mean to be accepted, but also to be exalted. If you do what is right, will you not be? You, um, let's see the verse. <clears throat> if thou doest well, shall not thou be accepted? The word here <clears throat> is actually exalted. If you do what is well, you will be exalted, not accepted, but exalted. That's why <clears throat> Abraham was exalted, because he did what is right. Amen. Yeshua was exalted above every name because he did what is right. Amen. Amen. But those who die that did not do what is right, they are thrown down, right? So, see, the accepted and exalted, big difference. Now, now, if we don't do what is right, <clears throat> sin is at the door. Think about this. Revelation 3.20, I stand at the door and knock. 
if anybody hears my word uh, if any, and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Sin is also like that. At the door. So which one now? Right? So which one are we going to select? So Revelation, it says here, if we, do, if we don't do what is right, sin is there already. Crouching at the door. Getting in. And then, the sin is desiring us. He wants us. Now, what is, what is interesting about this is this is a person. So I was thinking, is this the devil? Is this the devil? But can we rule over the devil? We can't. Romans 6.6. 6, it's the old man. It's us. You know the Lord of the Ring? There is another guy. Yeah, my precious. Right? There's another guy. We have to rule over that guy. Right? So that, that's how it is. It's desiring you. The Lord of the Ring is really a good example of sin. It's like changing. It's both, but it's, it's the same, but it's the, the problematic one. We have to rule over him. Stop. Sit. Out. <laughs> right? So that's, that's, this is Pardes. Okay? The second time, now what is very interesting is this. The second time sin, the word sin was mentioned is in Genesis 18.20. Many chapters after Genesis chapter 4. But this time, the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous. Whoa. Sin. Yes. Yeah, you want to turn on, turn on, turn on. Okay, yeah. Not only because of what the Lord is going to do for us, but I do what I do because I want to be obedient. Because he. That's the right. That's the right attitude. Because people sometimes they would do certain commandment. So that they can actually get the benefit. I'll give you an example. I will bless Israel because whoever blesses Israel will be blessed also. We should bless Israel. We should support Israel because that's the right thing to do. Not because you are blessed, you're going to be. Of course, you're going to be blessed. But if you have a different intention, that's where the problem is. All right? So are you getting it? You. Remember, Cain gave an offering too, but he got a, He did not do it properly. He should have, it should have been better for him to have kept it. Then he could not have sinned. <laughs> Rather than do it, and then he sinned. Right? Now, <clears throat> the first mention of the Hebrew word, kata, is in Genesis 39.9. Now this is where it says that sin is to miss it. It's like you got a, an arrow or a bow and arrow, then you hit it. You did not hit the bullseye. That's khata. Ah. So meaning you tried but missed it. Big difference. It is also sin, but it's different from the first one, the offense. Because you know what is right and you did not do it. You do the other thing. Yes, 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 yes. You know very well that if you do that to that person, he's going to get angry with you, and you did it anyways. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's an offense. But if you try to help him, and then you miss it, that's not, you know, he wants to eat something, and then you gave him something to eat, but that's not exactly what he wants. At least you tried. You missed it. It's still a sin, but it's not as bad as the other one. But it's still a sin. The problem of keeping just the sin just to miss it, it's like you're almost there but you're not. It's not as bad as you think. But sin is bad. Alright? 
So this is when it was mentioned when Jacob was complaining to Laban about his case. He's not being given his proper uh, salary or compensation. But he was given, right? He was given the wives. But he was not given properly. He was given food and everything, but he needs salary too, right? So it's, it's there, but it's missed. It's, it's like, okay, I'm going to observe the Sabbath, but I'm going to do this. You know, you, you're missing it. You're not doing it properly. It's different from those who say, no, Sabbath has been done away with. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do this, this day, on my own. That's offense. The other one is, is khata, the other one is the other one. It's offense, right? So there's a difference. <clears throat> well, it, it, it is still an offense. That's why, that's why we tell them. When, when they want to do something, it's like this. Cain thinks that he can sacrifice also with the fruits of the land. But it was not accepted. It, was, it, it is an offense. Actually, there is only, uh, there's only one day that was set in the Bible. So in other words, if you teach the, uh, the other day, then it is, an of, uh, it is a sin. You're teaching, uh, it's teaching people to sin before God. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, actually, the, the Sunday, per se, uh, it's not a sin per se. Not, not, uh, not, not honoring Shabbat. That is the main offense. Exactly. When 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 one person would actually reject the Sabbath and replaces it with something else, that's the offense. But because of your ignorance or innocence, because you know people just doesn't know better, they don't know. They thought they were doing it, but they did not. That's the kha. They missed it. They were trying it, but missed the mark. They missed it by one day. <laughs> I'm sorry? There is no excuse, of course. There is no excuse when they are faced with it. God is just. One way or another, He's going he's gonna to let you know. All right? Now, other words for sin. Ashma, see, asthma means guiltiness or fault. Then you got the shaga, means to stray or mislead, or you'd been misled, or to go astray. You know what it means? You know the differences? Of, it's, see, the Hebrew word, the Hebrew is very rich in words. It has different, specific for certain things. But it has been painted general, generally as sin. Everything is sin. But you have to identify which one is which. Right? Now, the khat is a crime. This is rebellion. These are those who rebel against the Lord. They, 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 that's a sin too. But it is an outright rebellion, not not like missing the mark, not just an offense. I'm not just offending you. I'm not just, I don't know, I missed it. But this one, I know for sure, and I'm going to intentionally do it. The, the, in, in response to what uh, Jim said, remember the word shaga, to means to stray or to mislead. mislead. That, in that other words, we are misleading people. When we teach another day. Well, that's, that's for the teachers, though. Yeah. But not for those who attend to it. Because what, what he's referring to is those who are being misled. Now, they're, of course, they're under Shaga, but those who teaches them, oh, who knows better, is this. This is a to crime. Teach otherwise, yes. Exactly. Yeah, actually, with regards to the teachers, if you, if you look at number three, that is the crime. It's a crime. <laughs> it's a rebellion. <laughs> now, with regards to the misleading, yes. Those are still the teacher, but... Uh, they are saying that this one is this when they know already that it's the other one. The, 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 the number two actually is, is yeah. the, the, the people who had been misled or, or yeah. led astray. Misled. But the, the number three is the one who's doing it. <laughs> yeah. The number three is they know, they know it's wrong. Yeah. 
They know it's wrong. And they, they just go and rebel. Yeah. Exactly. So if I don't know anything about it and continues to teach otherwise, you are mis No, you but are not. You're, you're misled. No, you, you're misled. But there you're are misled. different levels of sin. There are yeah, there are different levels of sin. Okay. Um, the, the reason why I'm pointing this out is so that you will know that sin is not just sin by itself. There are Hebrew words that actually covers from you're trying but you missed it or you don't know about it but you're led astray. But there is also like you intentionally do it and there is also one that is offensive. Brother Michael. Okay. That uh, happened to me. I know there was a wrong, but I done it. Twing the knife, the rock hadash said to me, that's the way you learn Yeshua. And uh, they hit my heart. That it was an uh, the afternoon. First thing in the morning, when the guy coming, I get to ask forgiven what they done it. He said, Mike, but it was my fault. I said, no, it was my fault because you don't know, but I know. And also, it doesn't mean that we have sinned against a person. We already have sinned against God. It doesn't mean like, like that. Because say, for example, if one person would say, um, you know, I'm going to really be offended if you're going to go for a Sabbath day. If you're going to go and worship God on the Sabbath, I will be offended. So now you're not doing it because you're offending someone. All right? Exactly. Your loyalty to a person stops when your loyalty to God starts. So, you know, in as much as we are supposed to honor authorities, parents, loving neighbors and everything but when it comes to the point we are in a in a in a in a in a um, in a point that we have to decide which one is which we have to choose the lord mm -hmm. amen? amen now the last mention of sin in the tanakh is in Zechariah 13:1 in that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of david and to the inhabitants of jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness there's a fountain. Again, as we discussed this morning, you know, water, mayim, you know, heavens are like many waters. That's what literally it means. So there's a fountain, there's a river, that's heaven. Anyway, um, um, so there is a, a, a fountain open for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Okay? Now, the first mention of sin in the Brit Kadashah or New Testament is in Matthew 12.31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, shall not be forgiven unto men. Very interesting, isn't it? The very first mention of sin in the Brit Kadashah is about the sin against the Holy Spirit. Very interesting. The Bible was not written by chance. It ha there is someone higher than everyone controlling it it will go exactly where it's going to happen his words will be there so it reminds us about sin the aggravation of sin and this sin is blasphemy about the holy spirit now the last mention of sin is in first john 5 17 all unrighteousness is sin and there is a sin not unto death so meaning there is a sin that is to death. So these are one of the questions that I asked my, my previous pastors and they cannot even give me an answer. What is a sin that causes death? And what are the sins that doesn't cause death? But it says all, all sin are unrighteousness. You cannot have a jaywalking and be sentenced to die, are you? But you violated the law. In the law of God, in as much as you violated one and not the other, you're still a lawbreaker. But it won't lead you to hell because you violated one. There are sin 
that will cause your death. And there are sin that, that doesn't, but it affects your life. Of course, when you get caught in a jaywalking, you get ticket yeah. or you might get hit, right? By, you know, you may have an accident or something. So in the law of God, there are also um, commandments that you violate that will cause death. And very interesting enough that there are certain commandments that causes death. Murder is one, life for life. If you dishonor your parents. That's death penalty. If you violate the Sabbath, death penalty. Was it also the case in our heard on the news that uh, this uh, young man was put in prison. He was innocent. After 12 years, they actually found out that he was actually innocent, not guilty. The law was wrong in this, in this event, you know? Well, yeah, in the law of the land, the law of the law of the land obviously is corrupted, but we are not talking about the law of God. Believe me, there is complete evidences and, and videos and, you know, witnesses. <laughs> you see the watchers? They're writing it. The angels are the watchers. Exactly how you did it, when you did it. And they, they will stand up. Yeah, I saw him. I saw him. I saw him did it. <laughs> so you, you can't. It's like saying they're accusing the brethren. No, no, no. They're not, they're not accused. They're, there are witnesses. No, no. Well, it has nothing to do with the brethren are the same people. And it was Satan. I, what I'm telling is those who will be accused by the Lord. But even though you, when a person says he's a believer but still do sin and thinks that he can get away with it, there's a problem. Anyway, it's an entirely different topic. Remember, we're just in a terminologies right now. Now, the word sin in Greek is, there are two. Hamartia, which is an offense. You know, what offends you, uh, Sister Maria? <laughs> what really offends you? When, when, no, you don't have to tell me. If, if certain thing that really offends you and I know it and I still do it, yeah. that's an offense. But if I didn't know it and I accidentally did it, it's still, it's still I sin against you, but it is hamartana. I missed the mark. I did not do it properly. I offended you, but in, in not, not intentional. So those who doesn't know the commandments, they fall into this one. But those who do, and they're against it, they fall into this. Hamartia. So it's not just about missing the mark. It's also about knowingly doing it the other way. Now, other words. This is what I'm telling you. We're going to go here, right? There are other words. Transgression. In Hebrew, it is Pesha. It was first mentioned in Exodus chapter 30, verse 7. I'm, I'm teaching you to do the part this here. Okay? So, uh, no. no uh, pas, uh, Pesach is, is the... Yeah. Transgression is Pesha. It's different. Which means rebellion. You know? It, mentioned, it was last mentioned in John 3, 4. The Greek word used is in, 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 in uh, Brit Kadasha is parabasis, which means violation. Okay? Now, another word is iniquity. It's in Hebrew, it's avon. Um, it was first mentioned in Genesis 15 16, which means perversion. And it was last mentioned in 2 Peter 2 16. And the Greek word used is paranomia. Now, which means perversion. No, Avon is different from Avon. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's Greek. Now, um, um, well, no, but, but your name is, um, yeah, it's different. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're saved. Okay? Um, the Greek word used is paranomia. This is very interesting because these are the two words combined together. Mm -hmm. The word para, you know, the paratroopers para. or paramilitary. They are not really military, but they look like a military. But yeah. It tastes like a military, look like a military, but they are not military. They are paramilitary. They are, and nomia is law. See, see there? It's a perversion. It looks like it. Like making Sunday as a Sabbath day Seems good, but it's a perversion. 
it looks like it it looks like a sabbath it feels like a sabbath it it even like you know it, everybody thinks it's a sabbath but it is not a sabbath <laughs> but again i'm i'm not saying that um uh, there is a specific biblical passage that goes against sunday worship there is none and again i will repeat there is no specific commandment in 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 the word of god that says thou shalt not worship god on the first day of the week well there's nothing like that or thou shalt not worship god on sunday there's nothing like that but it says remember the sabbath and keep it holy there's big difference what i'm saying is for those people who would say the sabbath now is sunday that's paranomia right um it's a perversion now trespass it was first mentioned in genesis 31 36 and in hebrew the first you uh hebrew used is pasha similar to the first one similar to this transgression but the actual word that is later used is the asham and it was in leviticus 5 7 and it refers to fault or guilt there's a fault you know it's your fault you know i'm guilty i i i crossed the border you know uh the, the greek word used or the last mention is colossians 2 13 and the greek word used is para paraptoma which means side slip or an intentional error i didn't know i didn't know that's what it is i didn't know i offended you that's why but it's still a sin all right now let's talk about repentance so sin I, I put so much emphasis on sin because that's the biggest of all it's basically the center of everything of, of the enemy <laughs> of course now we, we we go with other uh words repentance so i'm just starting right it was mentioned 72 times in the bible now in around 13th century it means to feel such regret for sins or crime as produces amendment of life that's that's uh and it came from an old french repentir um and the bulgar latin is penitir meaning to regret and it's also from poenitir to make sorry and poena uh, the distinction between regret and repent is made in many modern languages but that the differentiation is not present in the older periods before they are the same now they made the difference all right now it was first mentioned in exodus chapter 13 verse 17 and the hebrew used was nacham which means to sigh it's like ah i missed again right um to breathe strongly by implication to be sorry and you know it was last mentioned in revelation chapter 3 verse 19 as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent now the greek word used there is metanoio which means to think differently or afterwards you think differently or re you reconsider what you did morally to feel compunction and the meaning of compunction is distress of mind meaning you're troubled Arr, i did it right it's like why did i did it why did i do it why you know it's you're troubled by it that's repentance like king david, repent. like, like king david. Mm -hmm. now sometimes by understanding the definition we have to now compare to how we reacted when we repented did we really repent or we just uttered the, the prayer and felt sorry and that's it being sorry is different from repentance you're turning away turning away from what you committed before isn't it repentance it is repentance because um repentance involves action but do you have to sit and weep and mourn because or you turn away it's a turning away well it depends on the the emotional capability of a person not a lot of pe people 
has to mourn or weep because they have a stronger but stronger emotions but still they are very very sorry yes. women are easy to cry men are not so when men cries again different le levels that's a learned thing and, and meaning they are like really really troubled <laughs> Men not crying is a learned thing as a child. <laughs> Men okay. have the same emotions that women have. Well, you no, know, it's a different weeping. He's weeping for Israel because he was sorrowful rather than repentant. It's Mother Richard, different. Richard, because your father told you, you're a man, you should not Don't cry die. so easily. Well, that, that, that's, that's the truth. That, that's, the, that's the culture of the people, yes. right? Okay. So, meaning there is a distress of mind. That's that you're troubled by it. That's repentance, right? All right, so we understand repentance. Yeah. So now we have to compare and look back. Did we really repent? Mm -hmm. <laughs> repent. Because if we did not repent, big problem. There's still time. So remember, you know, the reason why you're hearing this is because you're under grace. We're going to go <laughs> later on there. You're under grace because now you, can, you still have time. This is a grace period. This is the grace period. You're being given a time to repent. We are given time to repent. Okay, so that's repentance. Now confession. It was mentioned 34 times in the Bible. In the late 14th century, remember we're talking of English words here that were used in the Bible. Right? And we're comparing it to the original language. Now, and we're defining it right now. In the late 14th century, the old French confessor, from vulgar Latin, confessar, confessor, uh, in Latin, confess, past participle, stem to confiteri, to acknowledge, uh, fateri, to admit, or to speak, to utter it. Its original religious sense was of one who avows his religion in spite of persecution or danger, but does not suffer martyrdom. In old French confessor, thus had a figurative sense of to harm, hurt, and make suffer. That's the definition. That's the etymology of the word, right? Because the problem now in the modern definition is the, the words has been toned down. Yeah, I already confess. I spoke. Yeah, I already repented. I shed one tear. So it's it's not like that. Well, that's entirely different uh, matter. All right. Um, okay. It was first mentioned in Leviticus chapter five, verse five, and the Hebrew word used was yada. What, what is very interesting is there's an English term like yada, yada, yada. So confess, confess, confess. <laughs> so. So it's like, you know, it, it, but, but of course, this is a Hebrew word and English word. Sometimes what is really yada in English, right? But when, when people are like, you talk too much, like yada, 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 right? So, um, but they are talking Hebrew already. <laughs> Meaning, hey, confess, <laughs> right? Um, which means literally to use uh, the hand, physically to throw, or uh, to revere or worship, or to bemoan by wringing of hands. It's like, hmm, you're, it's like you're twisting the water from the clothes. That, that's the term actually in, in, in Hebrew, yada. So you're pouring it out from deep in you and speak. That's why it says, if you confess with your mouth that Yeshua is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The problem is the word, the English word conf confess has been toned down because we don't, don't bother to go back to the original language. It means from the deepest part of our heart, we like squeezed it and say, yes, he is really my Lord. Different meaning, right? When we go back to the original words, yada, that's, that's the literal meaning of it. Yes, Lord, you are my Lord. It, that's, it's not like, yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. A lot of people confess, but there's no transformation. It's from the mouth only. Exactly, not from the heart. Yeah. All right. 
Now it was okay. Um, it was last mentioned in Revelation chapter three verse five. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Now we're gonna discuss this uh, sometime. <laughs> oh, the salvation can be removed, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. I will confess. Yes. He is my son. Yes, he is mine. He is mine. It's like he's going to fight for you. He's going to fight for us. That, that's how it is. It's not just the, the mouth. Remember when, when the apostles were, were actually, um, they were accused. Why is it that your disciples are, are violating the Sabbath? You know, they're not washing their hands. They're eating. You know, they were eating. Did he say, hey guys, what are you doing? No, he defended them. He did not say, yeah, you're right. Hey, come on guys, let's talk. No, he defended them. Anyways, um, let us consider the most famous verse, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right? Now, Confess. Remember the word confess? Yada, supposedly in Greek, in Hebrew. The mindset, first of all, John was a Jew. He was a Hebrew. He's putting it in Greek words what the Hebrew word means. Confess our sins is pouring out. It's like, you know, you're, you're washing the clothes and you're removing all the water from it. Squeeze it. You're wringing it like so hard. That's how it is. Urgh, Lord. Remove everything. That's confessing our sins. And not just, Lord, please forgive me. Amen. <laughs> There's big difference. Wow, what a difference yeah. Now, he is faithful and just. Take a note of this because this is part of this. Okay? Forgive us from our sins. And then, end. Not or, not a continuous, but end. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, another word. To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There are differences between unrighteousness and sins. Because righteousness is based on law. Unrighteousness meaning you fall short of the law. But sins is an offense. Hamartia is the, what, the, the word that was used here. Meaning you know knowingly and you did it anyways. He's going to forgive and he's going to cleanse. Big difference. These are two different things. Right? Huh? Sins, intentional, hamartia, and the word that was used there is hamartia. To cleanse us from un un unrighteousness. Meaning those things that we are supposed to do, but we, we, we fall short to it. That's the missing the mark. So when, when we observe the Sabbath, we may not be able to observe it perfectly. That is unrighteousness. That is missing the mark. But He will forgive us. And those things that we intentionally did, He will forgive us. If... We confess, we wring it out of our body and blot it out. Mm -hmm. I really remember when Microphone. I remember, Brother Richard, when uh, I said this. Um, oh, well, the Lord understands that. Knowing about the Sabbath, uh, I went to the Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. And he was, this verse actually came to me. Uh, in, in my life, obviously my family's life too, is that he forgives us uh -huh. because he, he, he brought me back, right? Uh -huh. my family. Uh -huh. That is a true verse. Uh -huh. that, see? You know. uh -huh. So, remember this. When you see this verse now, you will have a different perspective. It's different, right? When we go back to the original words, it becomes different. Now, the Greek word used um, in in uh, here is uh, for confess is homologeo. 
Of course, the, the, the Hebrew word is yada, but the Greek word is homologeo, which is a combination of two Greek words, mean, meaning homu, which is the same, and logos, which is word, meaning the same with the word. We are in agreement of the word of God. Yes, it is sin, then we confess that. Yes, this is sin, we identify that. We don't give excuse like, but, but, no, no buts. It is a sin, it is a sin. In agreement. Because we cannot confess something that we don't agree. Right? And gives himself to the Lord and then goes into the world. Then back to the Lord and back to the world. How? No, no. The, the first question is whether mm -hmm. were they really with the Lord? I know. Because, yeah. you know, it's, it's a different thing, right? It doesn't make sense, you know? There are, okay, listen to me. I, just, I told this to some people. There are a lot of Christians right now who think they, they are saved, mm -hmm. but they are not. But they will be. It's not that they will not be saved at all, but they will be. But they think they are, but they are not. But they will be. How do you know that they're going to be saved? Hmm? How do you know they're going to be saved? Because now. Revelation chapter 7 says so. There's a lot of people from different nations, tongues, and, and nationalities that will come out of the tribulation. They're going to give their life to the Lord literally. Okay. Not just by word, Lord, I give my life to you. No. Lord, I give my neck to you. They're going to kill because they're not going to receive the mark. They're going to be saved because of that. Not because they utter a short magical prayer, no. But because they learned throughout their lives, they may not have kept the commandments that they're supposed to. But in the end, those who had been chosen from the very beginning will be saved no matter what happens. That's how it is. They will confess with their mouth, Lord. And then they will believe. Right? So it's, 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 that's how it is. All right? Mercy. It was mentioned 276 times in the Bible. In late 12th century, God's forgiveness of his creatures' offenses. That's the meaning. Old French, merci, or merci. Uh, in 9th century, it's called reward, gift, kindness, grace, pity. Latin, mercedem. Reward, it means reward, wages, to pay higher. In vulgar Latin, it means favor or pity. Um, you know, um, in church Latin, applied to heavenly reward to those who show kindness to the helpless. Okay? In 6th century. The meaning is uh, disposition to forgive or show compassion. It's as attested uh, as uh, early as 13th century as an interject. Again, this is an English word. I'm not talking about the actual Greek or Hebrew word about mercy. I'm talking about the English word mercy. So in 13th century, this is what it says. In French, largely superseded by mercerie except as a word of thanks, seat of mercy, golden covering of the Ark of the Covenant. In Tyndale's uh, loan translation, and it is also known as uh, propitiatory. This is this is the uh, the word that they heavily use in when they analyze the Book of Romans. Anyway, it was first sorry, misericordia in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go in Italian too. See, yeah, so mercy. All right. Now it was first mentioned in Genesis 19:19 19, 19, by by Lot to the angels that saved them. Uh, and the Hebrew word used is chesed, which means kindness. Okay. Now it was last mentioned in the Tanakh in Zechariah 10:6 with a promise to the house of Judah and the house of Joseph. It's a it's kind of a promise to them. All right. It was first mentioned in Brit Kedashah. In Matthew 5, 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And the Greek word used was eleio, which means compassionate by word or deed. 
and it was last mentioned in Jude chapter 1 verse 21 keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Yeshua Mashiach unto eternal life so we can actually build teachings by using pardes you know if if you um, I I'm actually uh, I have a uh, uh, an experimental uh, site, uh, the, the Pinoy Mechanic YouTube. And, and I'm, I'm actually using it to teach those that I teach abroad. Um, uh, because of my physical absence, I would put it there. We discuss, I put things there. So it's not yet for public, but you can visit it. Um, I have a parsha there pertaining to about the Jacob's Well and about the Samaritan woman. Amazing. It's, it's amazing. I mean, it's a seven-minute video, but it's a teaser. I would say it's a cocktail. <laughs> so you, you, can, you can taste it a little bit, and then you study your own. But sometimes it's good to have those little things, and then now it gives you the appetite to actually search for more. So check it out. All right? Um, now, grace. I, put it inten I intentionally put it as the last one because this is where the people got into trouble. And, and I could have gone grace and mercy, but I made mercy and grace. <laughs> it was mentioned 170 times uh, in 159 verses in the Bible. Uh, and what is interesting about uh, grace actually is in 18th century, it, it was highly used. But going down to 2010, it's being, it's, it, it went down and then now it's going up again because of the hyper grace uh, teaching. Uh, Brother Jonah? Actually, grace is my neighbor. Ah, uh, grace is your neighbor. Okay. There you go. Now you will be in trouble with grace. <laughs> All right. So it means in 12th century, it's, it's a verb, meaning to thank. That's why, let's say grace, like that, right? Yeah. From old French, gracier. Um, now, the meaning to show favor and to lend or add grace to something in 1580s. As, a, as in grace us with your presence, with the root of the musical sense of the grace notes. But the noun, it's God's favor or help. From old friends, grace, pardon, divine grace, mercy, favor, thanks, elegance, virtue. In 12th century, the Latin gra gratia, favor, esteem, regard, pleasing quality, goodwill, gratitude. So uh, in Spanish, gracia. All right. It's meaning, uh, or uh, gratus, it came from gratus, pleasing, agreeable, uh, to favor. Now, even in Lithuania, it is a giriu, <laughs> to praise, celebrate, or to praise, right? Now, what is very interesting is this. Our theologians are defining grace as an unmerited favor. <laughs> um, unmerited favor, okay. So... It, it sounds good, though, right? It sounds good. Uh, are we descendants of Shem or Japheth? Are we descendants of Shem or Japheth? Well, it doesn't matter. Um, what matters is we are from Abram. Uh, Shem would be a good one. Japheth is not a bad thing because um, we will dwell with, uh, with the tents of Shem. So only the Lord knows. Only the Lord knows. But it's entirely different topic, and I would like to discuss that on a Shabbat a Bible study instead. What's that? Yes, I was pursuing to this because God can find anything in His Word that the Sabbath was a covenant between His people and His people. Oh, no, no. The Sabbath was made for Adam. That's what Yeshua said. The Sabbath was made for Adam because the Son of Man is the Lord of Adam. Of course, it's, it's now a sign, right? So it's, it's made for man, not just for specific people. But listen, is it for everyone? No. Because according to Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, do not let anybody judge you with regards to food or drink, Sabbath, new moon, for these are shadows of what is to come for the body of Messiah. Listen, according to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, a day to the Lord, it's a thousand years. And a thousand years is a day to the Lord. Now from Adam to our time, 6,000 years. It's like six days. Right? 
Now, the millennial kingdom is the Sabbath of the Lord, which is, that's why Yeshua is the Lord of the Sabbath, because He is the Lord of the millennial kingdom. Is it for everybody? No, not everybody will resurrect on the first resurrection. Only those who believe in Him will resurrect on the first resurrection and will be part of the millennial, millennial kingdom. And blessed are we who those who's going to resurrect on that day because we will not be hurt on the second death. In, in addition to the word sign, if you go back into the uh, Hebrew alphabet, it's Aleph, Taf, but in the middle is the, va the Vav. In other words, the sign is connects the beginning and connects the end. That's the sign. Mm -hmm. It is a sign for man. The Sabbath is a sign for man. In other words, the whole of humanity should be observing the Sabbath because it is a sign for us to be separate from the world. Now, um, as I was discussing with uh, Brother Jonah earlier, let me share this to you. Um, the Lord um, make things to uh, repeat things so that it's, it's kind of a message to us. Okay? As you can see, days are repeating, weeks are repeating, months are repeating, years are repeating. And there's a reason for that. The more frequent it is, the better you pay attention. Do we sleep every day? It's a reminder that we will all die. All right? And then when we wake up in the morning, it's a reminder that we will resurrect again. Now, it depends on how you wake up in the morning. Cranky or happy? Praise the Lord, right? It's like, I'm going to be judged, <laughs> right? So be careful, right? Now, weekly is the Sabbath. It's a reminder of the Lord's rest, of the millennial kingdom. It's more frequent than the monthly, more frequent than the annual feast. Very important. The annual feast is also important. The Shemitah is every seven years is also important. The Jubilee is also important every 50 years. Frequency. So it's just a teaser again. A cocktail. You know, it, it's not about this. It's about the important words, right? Okay, let's go back. All right, Latin for grace. Gratus or gratia. It means pleasing or thankful. In English, grateful. Then you have grace. So in Middle English, Old French from Latin gratia, gratus, to pleasing, thankful, related to grateful. All right, that's grace. It was first mentioned in Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hmm. That's the first word? Yeah, it is. But Noah found... So there's grace already during that time? Yeah, it's just specific for Noah. Now, if the definition of grace is unmerited favor, can you look at that uh, passage, please? I would like to point out something. E Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. We have to understand why the Lord showed grace to Noah. And I'm going to show you later on in Brit Kadasha whether the definition of our beloved theologians are right or wrong. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, before that, verse 7. And I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things, to the birds and to the sky, for I am sorry that I made them. Um... Where is it now? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, uh, okay. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. That's uh, verse 11. Verse 12, And God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. And uh, God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And behold, I am to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark. Um, uh, so I'm looking for a particular verse here. I just saw it, and now it's gone. Genesis 19, 19. 
Genesis 1919? Uh, it's about Noah. Genesis 1919? Uh, 1919. Let's see. 1919. Behold, your servant has found favor in the sight and have magnified your loving kindness which have shown me by saving my life and I cannot escape the mountains. Let the disaster overtake me. This is Joe. Uh, this is uh, Lot actually. I'm looking at um, um, uh, da, 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 da. Um, let's see here. I lost. I, I I thought I actually highlighted it, but I probably was too sleepy too. <laughs> um, anyway, there is a reason why the Lord uh, showed grace. Or uh, grace to, to Noah. Um, uh, hold on, hold on. Um, and then, okay. Mm. Uh, anyway. For some reason, I lost it. Um, let me grab my my other resource here because I know I put it here somewhere. My apologies. Okay. The reason why the Lord has grace on on Noah, it's not just an unmerited favor. It is he did something. Uh, Um, Noah. Um, uh, actually, what it says there is, oh here, oh here. Um, Genesis chapter six verse nine. How come it's not in my Nasbi? That's why I like King James. <laughs> six nine. Oh here, see. The enemy is blinding me. But anyway, the Lord is gracious and merciful to me. Verse 9, this is the reason. Uh, in verse 9, uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, these are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. And Noah walked with God. That's the similar description of Enoch. And Enoch walked walk with God for 365 years and for 300 years and he's gone. Right? Three, all in all is 365, right? Three, so he walked with God 300 years. Noah in his generation was found to be righteous. But it is unmerited favor. But see, the Lord looked at the whole earth. It was, it was really evil. But he found one. Who's righteous? Now let's look at at um, Acts. Acts chapter. I'm just gonna show you that it's not really unmerited favor. It, in as much as it's close to it, but it is not. It's not like okay, you're the you're the you're the most evil person here. I'll pick you because that's unmerited favor. No, God does not do that. Um, he always. He, he finds someone who keeps his commandment. Look at the Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man at Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called Italian cohort, a devout man, the one who feared God with all his household and gave many alms to the Jewish people or to the people and prayed to God continually. About the ninth hour of the day, this is the time of prayer, he clearly saw a vision of an angel of God who just come into him and said to him, Cornelius. And fixing his gaze upon him and being much alarmed, he said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Is this unmerited favor? He did something too. Now, try to figure out a, a, a Bible character that was picked by God. He was picked by God because 
even though he did not do anything good at all. Zero good. Zero good. He was picked by God because that's unmerited favor. Show me. All the apostles, they did good. They may not be the best, but they, they, they were not uh, that evil. The prostitutes, right? They came, they were crying. They repented. Zacchaeus, in his heart, he was wondering about Yeshua. He knows it. When we look for him, he will pick us. When we do things, it's not like you're completely random because you're so evil, but because unmerited grace, I'll pick you up and put you here. Paul is also zealous for the law. He, he, was, he, was, he thought he was serving God by killing the apostate. But he was picked. All of them were picked because they have some, somehow some, something good in them that is longing for God. They're longing for God. He's not going to pick you out of the blue and you're just playing whatever and then pick you up because God has unmerited favor to you. Of course, you may still not deserve that mercy, but you did something. You're longing for the Lord. Each one of us, go back to, to our old life. Go back to our old life. Just in addition to, uh, to what you're saying, actually, this was the theme that I was going to talk about. But anyway, I'm just going to reveal it because I think it's just proper for me to reveal it. If you look at Jeremiah 9.25, it says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, that I will punish all who are circumcised and yet uncircumcised. And then you go down, Egypt, Judah, Adam, and sons of Ammon, and Moab, and all those inhabiting the desert who clip the hair on, on their temples for all the nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised at heart. So, so circumcision, circumcision, those who, circumcision is those who follow the law, the Jews. The uncircumcised is those who does not follow the commandments of God, generally. The circ that's why they call the Jews circumcised. Yeah, Paul we constantly uses that term terminology. Yeah, we we gonna we gonna we can discuss that on the Bereans meeting. Uh, we need yeah. to finish this up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What you what, what I see here in the Hebrew about that them doing not doing something is Sedek. 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 Okay. Uh, Siddiq. Oh, Siddiq. Okay. Uh, that's the translation. Yeah, for, okay. For righteous. Yeah. All right. So what it means is the Lord is still looking for those who wants to obey Him. And then He's going to use them. Whether, whether you are this or that, if you're repentant, no matter how sinful you are, the Lord will, will hear your prayer. But... For those who are arrogant because they were like, I already prayed to the Lord. I'm not going to do that. I'm no longer under the law. There's no repentance. There is nothing. There is no remorse in their heart. I've been chosen from the beginning, from the foundation of the world. I, got, I received the unmerited favor from the Lord. And that's what the word of God says. True. But did you repent? Did you really, really, really repent? Did you confess? We now know the definition of it, right? So anyways, again, we are just in the introduction. This is terminologies only. We're gonna, in the going, going to the future, we're gonna study each one, right? Now, we know now that grace has been existing even from the first world, the time of Noah. He gave grace or show, show kindness and favor to those who are righteous or at least to those who seek him. At least the desire to seek him. You know? You know why, I, why, why I'm here? In, in Mishanic uh, uh, um, congregation? Because in my heart when I was young, I was longing for, I was, I was wondering. Yeah. Like how did 
The ancients or the first century believers worship the Lord. How? And the Lord has been gracious to me. Now I'm wondering what it's be like in the millennial kingdom. <laughs> so I know that the Lord will be gracious to me. Are you not? Are, you're not wondering? Uh oh. <laughs> no, you should be wondering. Yeah. <laughs> then, then it's gonna be. Then the Lord will grant the desires of your heart if we keep His commandments. All right. Now the Hebrew word used here is chen, which means kindness and favor. Right. It was last mentioned in the Tanakh in Zechariah 12.10 with the promise again to the house of David and to Jerusalem. It was first mentioned in Brit Kadasha in Luke chapter 2 verse 40 referring to child Yeshua. Why is he getting, of course he is the son of God, but why is he getting the favor of God or the grace of God of his father? Because he was obedient. He was, no, he was still a child here. He was obedient to his commandments. Now the Greek word used here in Matthew in, in uh, Luke chapter 2 verse 40 is charis which means favor. And it was last mentioned in Revelation 22 21 which is the last verse of the Bible. Think about it. The grace is found in the last verse of the Bible. It's in Genesis and also in Revelation. Think about it. By the time of the destruction, of, before the destruction of the first world, there was already a word grace through Noah, right? And then it crossed our time now. Towards the end, in Revelation 22, 21, the grace of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach be with you all. Amen. This is the last verse of the Bible. Now, let us examine some verses related to this. John 1.17 For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yeshua HaMashiach. There is a problem with this. You know what's the problem with this? They put the word but. Adversative. And there is no Greek word there for but. Why did they have to contrast that? Why do they have to contrast the law given to Moses and the grace and truth by Yeshua HaMashiach. They are continuation. For the law was given by Moses, grace and truth came by Yeshua HaMashiach. There is no but there. It's not contrary. See, when we go back to the original, we understand. The translation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace. Is that unmerited favor? See, when Cornelius was giving alms to the poor, praying every hour of prayer, generous to the Jewish people, God-fearing, did it save him? No. No. But it was an avenue that led his prayers to be answered by God so that the right way can be shown to him. You have to do this thing so that the grace will be given to you. The grace that will be given is, of course, unmerited favor, but you got to do something. The Lord has to see some kind of desire in your heart longing for him. It's not, no, it's not. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm not saying that it's going to give you, it's going to bring you to heaven. Otherwise, there's no need for Yeshua to come. The point is, it, it is not like you're doing all criminal activities and everything and you have no desire at all, any desire to God, and you've been chosen out of the blue to serve God. Think about it. That is contrary to the, to the scriptures. You have to have something. You may be a criminal, you may be an evildoer and everything, and then you came into your life that is like, yeah, what am I doing this? I'm, I'm lost. I want some savior or something. Then, that, then, then you will be saved. Then you will be given a way to salvation. You will meet Yeshua. It's not that during your happy moment of doing criminal activities, that's the time that you... 
You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Paul, though he was doing some criminal activities by chasing the, 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 the believers, but he was doing it for God. He thought he was doing it for God. You understand me? Yes. Okay. In, it's not in the original. It's not in Greek. There is no con continuative there. There is no de. The, the but is the de, de. It's, it's adversative. Okay, now let's summarize. First John 3, 4. Whosoever committed sin uh, uh, transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. That's the definition of sin. Okay? The Hebrew you used word for sin here is chata, means offense, especially habitual. The Hebrew word used for sin, um, I doubled it. What happened to my Greek? <laughs> oh, sorry about that. It should be the Greek one. Anyway, um, the other words for sin is ashma, meaning gu uh, guiltiness or fault. Shaga, meaning led astray or misled. And chet, to commit a crime. The word sin in Greek is hamartia. It's an offense. You know very well, you still do it. It's like you know that you're not supposed to kill, but you did. <laughs> Hamartano is to miss the mark. It's different. It's also sin, but it's different. Right? You want to worship the Lord. You didn't know that there's a Sabbath, but you worship Him on Sunday. That's Hamartano. But you just missed it by one day, but you didn't know. But when, when it was revealed to you, and you rejected it, then it becomes hamartia. But when you, you're confronted, it's like, huh? I, I did it the wrong thing. Why did it the wrong thing? Then, then you're going to correct it. Then your sin is forgiven. That's what it is. It's not, again, it's not because you worship on Sunday, but you miss the Sabbath day. All right? So it's not because you worship God on Sunday, you sin. No. You sin because you miss the Sabbath day. I, I hope I'm clear, to those, especially to those who, who are hearing us right now. There is no verse in the Bible that says you are not supposed to worship God on, on Sunday or first day of the week. But there is a verse that do not forget the Sabbath. But to say that Sunday is now the Sabbath, that's, that's a hamartia. All right? Of course. It's, it's greater sin, actually. A uh, transgression is pasha, it means rebellion, and the Greek word used is parabasis, means violation. Iniquity is avon, uh, in Hebrew, it means perversion. Uh, no, it's avon, not avon. Uh, it's avon, uh, and paranomia, which means perversion also. Now they, they got it right over here, all right? Traspass, asham. For traspass in Leviticus 5 7 refers to fault or guilt. And the Greek word used is paraptoma, all right? which means side slip or unintentional error. All right? Repentance, the Hebrew uh, word used is nacham, means to sigh, to breathe strongly, by implication to be really sorry. Greek word used is methanoeo, which means to think differently or to feel compunction that is distress, distress of mind, right? Confession, the word in Hebrew is yada. It's um, to bemoan, wringing of hands, wringing our hearts. Like, <coughs> we know this already, right? We confess either Yeshua is Lord or we confess our sins. Take it out from the heart, right? And the Greek word used was homologeo, which is a combination of two Greek words, the homo and the logos, meaning one with the word. Mercy was used, chesed in Hebrew, it means kindness. The reason why the Lord shows you kindness, because there is something in you that He likes. He's lo you're, in this sinful world, you're longing for Him, you're looking for Him. Then He will show Himself. That's why he said, if you search for me, I'm not far off. I'm there. I'm easy to find. But you're going to search me though. It's not like, come on. Here's your salvation. It's like, whether you like it or not, you're saved. Nope. I'm sorry, but that's not correct. It's not irresistible grace. No. 
Grace is not, come on, <laughs> irresistible. It's like a bribe. You can't resist it. It's just way too much. The reason why you're receiving it is because you're longing for it. You're asking for it. That's why it says, ask and it shall be given. He did not say, it will be given to you because it's unmerited favor. It was said, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. It did not say, come in because the door is always open. You don't need to knock. <laughs> you know, we have to follow the scripture. I hope you understand what is going on here. Right? The Greek word uh, used in, in, um, in the Brit Kadasha is eleio, which means compassionate by word or deed. Again, a grace is chen, meaning kindness and favor, and the Greek word used is charis. Now, these are the important words in the Bible, and this is just the one part of many parts, right? So, I'm just giving you an example that you may want to look deeper into the words, and by looking into the words, you will even get it, you will get more to the meaning and then we can check whether what we're doing is right and wrong amen, amen? amen. let us pray avino malkeinu our father and our king we thank you o lord for your word lord we we are so much grateful o lord because you have shown your grace lord we thank you because you have given us the things that we now know. And we pray, Lord, that we can live in accordance to your word and that we should share this to others as well. Lord, it is our prayer that may you multiply your words in our hearts so that we will not depart from them. Lord, we also pray for your um, for your guidance and help in every day that we walk for this generation is an evil generation oh lord and there's so many things that would deviate us from the truth but we know lord that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world lord as we continue to uh, wrap up our worship service lord we pray that may your our worship be acceptable and be um, um, be pleasing before you Lord and I pray Lord for the offering that will be given today may you bless us that it will be used mightily to propagate your message your gospel oh Lord bless the gifts bless the give those who can give and even those who cannot Lord for you know Lord that you love the cheerful giver Lord we praise you we honor you we magnify your name this we pray in Yeshua's most precious name, for he is our Lord, our Master, our Savior.